and I jumped out of bed, um, threw my clothes on, and I picked up my gun. That was that was my instinct because I'm I'm a gun owner. I'm a Second Amendment supporter, um, and I I believe in defending myself. And normally I answer the door with a gun, especially if it's someone that I don't expect coming to my home. But for some reason, I had this weird gut instinct to not take my gun with me to the front door, which is was very out of out of norm for me. So I put my gun down and I just went down the hallway and the house was still dark. Marjorie Taylor Greene relaying a story, uh, I believe from early Wednesday morning where she said she was swatted. In case you guys aren't familiar with that term. Uh, apparently someone called the police on her, showed up at her house and they thought something was wrong. So as you point out there, as, as she pointed out there, she showed up there uh, and was gonna approach with her gun. This was gonna be a serious problem. Let's look at a tweet about it as well, cuz she now appeared on that show, but she also tweeted immediately though at 5.53 in the morning. Last night I was swatted just after 1 a.m. I can't express enough gratitude to my local law enforcement here in Rome, Floyd County. More details to come. So it's like a, a cliffhanger for a soap opera or something. Anyways, uh, more about actually swatting, again, in case you guys didn't know. Swatting's the act of making a hoax call to 911 to try and draw responses from law enforcement. Suspects can use technology to make it appear that the emergency call is coming from the victim's phone and the situations can be deadly. Um, I didn't know that aspect of it, honestly. I didn't know that there was some kind of voice configuration technology that makes you seem like you're there, or at least maybe location device types of things. Either way, uh, it was used on Marge. Uh, they arrived on the scene and they determined that it was actually fake. Uh, police said that a second caller using a digitally altered voice said they were upset about Green's views on transgender youth rights. About a month after taking office, Green did put out anti-transgender rights pl uh, placard outside of her DC office across from a transgender flag raised by her neighbor. You guys all saw that, it was Representative Marie Newman. And the sign said there are two genders, male and female, and trust the science. So that was part of the person's motivation for doing this. Now, update time. Apparently this morning she tweets this out again. This is a 611 this morning. Swatted again last night. I'm beginning to wonder if she's talking about stepping outside and because flies or something around her front door. Cuz it just keeps happening. Um, it's almost like when she promoted it the first time, she was expecting it to happen again so she can keep saying this happening. Again, not that this is right. But she doesn't appear to be all that disturbed by it. Anyways, um, let's. This is the interesting part, though, you guys, because she was talking about how dangerous of an act this is, and I think we can determine that. But the thing is, she just figured it out. Uh, let's watch. And I what could have happened? What could have happened if you had been holding your gun when you answered the door? I don't know. I mean, that's that. That's the danger, and that's how people. That's how people accidentally get killed. Um, you know, if if off these police officers are great though, Jack. I just I like I can't say enough great things about them. They they had their whereabouts. They were prepared to respond to the situation if the nine one one call was true. But in other situations, let's say if there's a you know a police officer that has a, a happy trigger finger, you know you don't know what could happen if they saw me with a gun. Um, they they may have fired at me. I would hope not, but. But that could that that's what has happened in the past with swatting. That is why that's why being swatted or swatting is is so dangerous. It's actually it's like a death by cop. It is it is a murder. Marjorie Taylor Greene educating uh, her followers on what how dangerous it is to falsely call the police on someone. Or for the police to show up at someone's door that they're not supposed to be at and then get aggressive anyway. And there's virtually a death by cop. It's almost like we've seen this before, but we haven't heard it from people like Marge. Because uh, there was that one situation of um, Brianna Taylor. <laughs> so um, where she, her house was broken into by police officers. They ran up in, her boyfriend rolled out and said, who is this here? Had his gun and guess who got shot up? Brianna got shot up. There's also the story of Amir Locke who was sleeping on a couch. Officers busted into the house. He has his gun, similar to the way Marjorie Taylor Greene is thinking. And you have to look up and go, "Oh my God, somebody's breaking in! Let me find my gun!" Because they're First Amendment supporting Americans. They believe in their first, their their sorry, their Second Amendment rights. Their Second Amendment believing Americans and they believe in their Second Amendment rights. And they're gun owners and they're just Americans. Why don't we talk about it then? There's more details of how they broke into folks' houses, but I think you guys remember that. Dan, what are your thoughts on this? I could go on this forever. I want to see what you're thinking. Yeah, I 
the, the first thing I really want to get to is to go back to the original clip we played to open the video with, mm-hmm. which was Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about the experience of being swatted and about her instincts, so to speak, about not getting her gun. Let, let's let's watch do that, that again. Yeah, let's 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 run that. Let's see it. And I jumped out of bed, um, threw my clothes on, and I picked up my gun. That was that was my instinct because I'm I'm a gun owner. I'm a Second Amendment supporter, um, and I I believe in defending myself. And normally I answer the door with a gun, especially if it's someone that I don't expect coming to my home. But for some reason I had this weird gut instinct to not take my gun with me to the front door, which is was very out of out of norm for me. So I put my gun down and I just went down the hallway and the house was still dark. Love that analogy there because you know I'm a big Second Amendment person. I always like to keep my gun with me to intruders and fight away, and I always bring my gun with me to the front doors. I advocate for all Americans to do, but I had this gut feeling that telling the story the way I want to tell it would be politically unadvantageous for me, and I might not it might not look good. I might be flying too close to the sun at this point in American political history when I was just calling for the FBI to be defunded and selling T-shirts about it like a couple weeks ago to be saying, oh yeah. Yeah, I approached the cops with a gun, told them to watch what happens. Yeah, no, I think it's <laughs> better that way. That I, I love the way she twists the story because again, MTG, she's a political actor here. Mm-hmm. The, the worst kind where she will likely bend a story to make it as, you know, so she can be the victim, even though she claims other people are being the victim here. But yeah, it's very funny. That's almost like how. You know, this used to be very relevant 10 years ago, back when gay marriage was a big issue facing the Supreme Court. Now it looks like it might be again, says history's flat circle. But there was a fight when we would see that, oh, now Republicans care about gay marriage because they see that their sons are gay or their daughters are lesbian. They now understand they're in the community. Oh, well, we have two in a row now where Marjorie Taylor Greene seems like, oh, wow. And this <laughs> this situation where the police can come to your house and potentially come armed and run down to your door. And if I had come armed to the door, they might have shot me and that would have been a violation of my rights. Oh no, that shouldn't happen. And then just conveniently just doesn't leave out Breonna Taylor. You almost wonder if she had an epiphany moment, but again, politically advantageous person. No, she didn't, no, she won't ever publicly. No, no, I'm not even sure if it crosses her mind. It's one of those things where you're in such a bubble, you have no idea the experiences that you're talking about being this. Did you guys know, wait, wait. Did you guys know that police run up in people's houses and shoot them? Did you guys know that police pull people over for absolutely no reason and then they harass them and search their car and say, hey, I'm gonna arrest you based off of nothing? Did you know that the police run up on people and say, you look, you fit the description of a black person that's in the area? And then they just go about assuming that it's you. Once they discover all these things, it's the first time because their experience is the real experience. This is in their mind. Everyone else that's talked about it, black folks, Latinos, anyone else that's been oppressed in this country. What they've done is somehow got together with this email. They've had a big email thread and they've uh, they've coordinated all their stories. And they said, this is what we're gonna do this month, you guys. We're gonna say the cops are doing this. But once Marjorie Taylor Greene experiences, none of that, by the way, just the thought of that possibly happening, it's a huge deal. So we'll probably see tomorrow morning, she'll tweet again about more swatting. Just and I do want to clarify really fast that like, we, we, I don't condone swatting because it is Not a at terrible all. experience and a lot of time it is targeted by, towards people on the left who are prominent. And I don't appreciate that at all um, as someone who's on the left in front of a microphone. But also for the reasons JR mentioned, because oftentimes when the police are knocking down the door in cases like Breonna Taylor uh, and they see a person of color on the other side, it doesn't end where the other person gets to talk on TV the morning after. Mm-hmm. Um, one more aspect of this, since there's a little bit of news with the Breonna Taylor situation, last thought here. One of these former Louisville cops just uh, pleaded guilty to lying about that search warrant. Former Louisville Metro Police Detective Kelly Hannah Godlet, Goodlett pleaded guilty Tuesday to one count of conspiring to violate civil rights of Breonna Taylor for helping falsify an affidavit for the search of her apartment that ended in her death in March of 2020. Hmm. So they also confirmed this too. The, the 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 DOJ confirmed this as well. In case you guys just thought she was somehow like coaxed into this confession, the Kentucky Attorney General said that they knocked and announced their presence, but her boyfriend Kenneth Walker and some neighbors said they didn't hear anything of the sort. Walker has said he thought the officers were intruders, as I mentioned. Officers used a police battering ram to break down her door, even though she was not the main suspect and shot her at least eight times. Just to remind you guys of the things that Marjorie Taylor Greene just learned about.
but she still doesn't care about 